Hello, here are five ways that you can improve your photography. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced photographer, there will be something here for you that will help. Now, these are things that I use every day in my life as a professional photographer, and the best part of all is that none of them cost anything whatsoever. So let's get into it. Number one, shoot the light. Lighting is vitally important for photography. You need to ensure that there's good light falling onto your subject, the right kind of light, the light that you want. There's a number of different ways that you can do this. You can wait for the good light to come along. Sunset is a classic example of this, or the sun coming in or out, or natural light falling through a window. Or you can move your subject into that light. You can move around, and I use my hand. I quite often, if I'm taking a naturally lit portrait, I'll quite often walk around with my hand out, looking at how the light falls onto my hand before I decide where I'm gonna put my subject. The other thing that you can do is actually change the light. You can use flash, you can use lighting, you can use a reflector, you could use a bedside lamp. You can use anything you like to add your own light into uh, a photograph. And the, the other thing worth mentioning is just reframing your thinking. That sometimes you go out with the intention of taking, let's say, some sunny landscape pictures and it clouds over and it starts raining and all of your hopes and dreams go out the window. But actually what you need to do is reframe and think, actually, I'm not going to get those sunny pictures, but what can I get? And maybe there's something else that you can take that's actually better than the pictures that you initially envisaged. Number two is to build an almost bionic relationship with your camera equipment doesn't matter what you shoot with, you need to practice so that you can get the best possible image quality and that you know how to enter all the different settings and menu systems on the camera. Also changing lenses and things like that, you need it to become almost instinctive, so practice at home. It's not worth waiting until you get onto an actual shoot environment where things are happening in front of you. You'll be missing pictures because you'll be concerning yourself with working out how the technical parts of your camera work. It goes also for camera bags and tripods and things like that. Sometimes before a big shoot I will unpack all of my gear, make sure that it's all working and pack it all back together again so that I know exactly where all of the different bits are. And with tripods, you know, sometimes if you're shooting a sunset you'll be assembling or disassembling your tripod in the dark, maybe on the beach somewhere. So you need to practice that. You need to practice that lots of times so it becomes almost bionic. And that way when you have an incredible thing happening in front of you, you won't have a technical barrier of not knowing how your camera equipment works. Number three is all about narrative. Now these things are subjective, so there's no right or wrong, but it's about trying to work out what it is that we're trying to show with our photography before we start taking pictures. So for example, with a portrait, do we want to create a really intimate connection between the subject and the viewer? In which case, we might want to exclude everything other than the person. We might want to use a telephoto lens. We might want to focus in on their eyes to, with minimum depth of field to create this window into their soul. Or maybe we're trying to show an environmental picture with somebody in a certain industry, let's say a blacksmith, and in which case we might want to use a wide angle lens and show them amongst their workshop with all of the different um, props from their industry around them. It's worth having in mind before you start taking the picture what the message is that you're trying to show because otherwise you can kind of end up somewhere in between those two examples. A, a good example as well is with landscape photography that you, sometimes we go out and we're in front of an incredible view but just taking that picture on a wide angle lens doesn't really convey what it is that we're trying to say about that view. Maybe we need to go in on some more intimate detail with a longer lens to really kind of pick out the things that will convey how we feel about the scene to our viewers. While these rules are important and worth thinking about, it's also worth completely throwing them out of the window and just reacting to life and light and the world around us and just shooting what is in front of us in an instinctive way. So there is no right or wrong with the narrative in a picture, but it is worthwhile having an idea in mind before you set out on a shoot about what it is that you're trying to say and what it is that you're trying to show with your photography. Number four is on my iPhone, just to change things around a little bit. And it's called One Thing, and it's really simplistic, but I've used this strategy multiple times over the years on photography assignments all over the world, and it's always helped me to improve my photography. So I thought it might be nice to share. So the idea is, is that if you have time, 
before you take a picture, when you're looking through your camera, when you're just about to take the picture, you think, what can I do to this? What can I do? What one thing can I do to improve this frame? And it might be that you're uh, that you move something within the frame. It might be that there's something there that you don't like, or it might be that you recompose. You think, actually, my composition is a bit not quite as good as I could be, and I can dig deep into my uh, toolbox of compositional uh, strategy to come up with something that is more dynamic in terms of the picture. Maybe you use a different aperture to create a different visual effect, or maybe you just wait for an ephemeral moment, an X factor moment to happen in the frame. Um, there's so many different things that you can use. Maybe you will decide to put the camera on a tripod because actually then you could lower your ISO and use a longer shutter speed and that might create a different effect. So rather than just accepting the picture, just constantly think, what one thing can I do to help improve it? Number five is from my car, I ran out of time. Number five is all about being a bulldog. It's about not giving up on your photography. It's about keeping trying new things. Keep pushing forward. If you're out photographing a landscape and the light isn't right, go back the next day. Go back three days running. Go back at sunrise. Do whatever you need to do to get the pictures that you wish for. It's the same with portraits. That sometimes when you're photographing people, maybe it's your mother, maybe it's your daughter or your partner, they kind of get bored after a few frames and they think that you're, you're kind of done. And actually what you want to do is keep trying out different things. And so you have to develop the skills to talk to those people and hold the game up so that you can carry on taking pictures and they're comfortable and you can really try and get the best possible picture. Street photography is the same. That Maybe you see an interesting character and you think, oh my god, I'd love to photograph that person. I'd love to get them to pose for me. You have to just approach them and ask, be a bulldog, try. They can always say no, you know, it's kind of fine. Um, it generally, if you're polite and respectful and explain what you're trying to do, that most people are really into that. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe and like and comment. This is a small channel and I really value feedback from people. It means the world to me, actually. Um, and if you happen to take a picture using some of the bits of advice that I've given out today, then just send it to me because I'd love to see. And, you know, maybe I could do a video about that. Who knows? Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.